Okay, I'm just going to do an update today, but it's more of actually a fundamental how this recent wave of AI is working. So if you already know everything about AI, chat GPT, how it works, ignore this. This won't help you. Um, I'll do a little bit at the end on, on application, but I think it's important because if people don't understand how this stuff was created, I'm not going to get technical. I don't, I'm not technical. I don't understand the technicalities. I just do have a basic understanding of how this stuff works. And it's important because if you understand how, how we got to this point, you can understand how to apply this stuff. And sometimes more importantly, where, where you can't apply it, where it's not going to work. So AI has been around a while. This latest revolution was a revolution and it started in 2017. And it came from a paper called Attention is All You Need. It was written by a bunch of Google scientists, researchers. And it was just a new concept, a new way to sort of train the computer to create language. And these things are called large language models, LLMs. ChatGPT is a large language model or, or GPT is a large language model. Uh, Google's got a large language model, uh, Meta, Facebook's got a large language model. There's going to be a few out there, and they're all very similar. Some are faster, some are slower, some are more moderated, some are less, some are released to the public, some are not. But they're all trained in a very similar way. Um, and, the, and the important part is the training. So you've, you've, you've heard people say ChatGPT is just an autocomplete tool which to me is the most confusing thing when you're writing paragraphs in to a prompt on chat GPT and it's giving you paragraphs out. The fact that it's just auto completing is a weird concept to me, which I kind of struggle to get my head around, but it is what it, it is how it works. Um, I just don't think it makes sense when you explain it in that way, but so it's so how these things work. So you train these models to speak, a language let's just say English for now but it speaks lots of languages so you write this program and then you, on day one you're going to start training it to you to to learn the language so computer shows up Monday morning nine o'clock okay I'm ready I'm here to learn train me so what it does it plays a game with itself the computer plays a game with itself so it feeds itself uh, a sentence or eight words it's not actually words, it, it's tokens, which is a piece of a word, which is a weird concept as well, but it doesn't matter. Just assume it's words, it's the same. It also, it doesn't save words, it's, it converts these words into numbers. All computers understand is numbers. It, they're very fast at computing numbers, they don't really get, understand what words are. So anyway, we feed it words, it converts it to numbers, and it saves it and it remembers. So you feed it a sentence. Eight, eight words at a time. Grizzly bears in Alaska like to eat salmon. But you don't tell it the whole sentence. You say the first word, grizzly. And then it plays a game with itself. Okay, what's the next word? And the computer says, uh, potatoes. And you're like, no, actually, we were looking for the word bears. So, okay, I'll remember that for next time. And then what's the next word? Grizzly bears in. And, he's, and it says, um, Susan. No, actually, we were looking for the word Alaska. Okay, got it. I'll, let me save that for next time. And it gets most of these wrong for probably a few thousand words. Because you keep feeding them eight more words at a time until it starts seeing the word grizzly again. Next time it sees the word grizzly, it says, oh, I remember that. Bears. Yep. Go finally get one right. And it remembers that for next time. But once it's read a few million words and a few trillion words, it knows every sequence of words. It looks at the few words behind it. It looks at where the words are in the sentence. Takes all kinds of extra context in. And then it guesses the next word. And that's how it's able to complete long sentences and paragraphs and and it can write forever in perfect english because it's seen every combination of every word ever written in the english language pretty much so it's read the internet it's read wikipedia it's read thousands of books one word at a time always guessing the next word the next word the next word so it's seen every combination of words ever produced on a computer and it writes in perfect English for that reason. So it knows everything that's been written, but it also knows nothing. It doesn't understand the concept of what a grizzly bear is. It just knows that the word bear follows grizzly often. And based on the few words before that, it'll get it right pretty much every time. So that's all it does. People ask, oh, well, where are the references and where did it read this and where did it learn that? It doesn't know where it read anything. It doesn't, it doesn't understand what a reference is. It just... It's just a lot of numbers, and it only remembers one word at a time. So if you say, well, it must have found this on this page, on this research paper, it, it, it doesn't know. 
Unfortunately, if that means somebody's paper that shouldn't have been read is read and it now knows that, that's kind of out there. It's a subject we're going to have to deal with, with plagiarism and that kind of thing and copyright in the future. But too many people have written blog sites and they're upset that this thing might have crawled my blog. We need to get past that. It's, this is not about blogs and somebody reading some secret travel um, tip that you wrote on some blog six years ago, which now you're surprised somebody's read it and remembered it and repeated it. it it's read it. It's done. It's finished. It knows it. These things are never going to forget. So they know everything and they know nothing. And it, it doesn't know what it knows. Images, same thing. Um, I'd recommend watching a guy called um, Imad Mustak. He's the CEO of Stable Diffusion. That's an image company. He's really good, really interesting in interview. One of these people you could tell after a few seconds, he's, he's really, really smart. He's a little bit out there. Um, but he explains how images are, how the, these image creations are made. It's the same thing. You show, you show on day one of training, you show this computer a picture of a double-decker bus and say, guess what it is? And it says uh, toothpaste. No. Nope. And then, then you give it a word and it says, okay, write, uh, make me a picture from a lamp. And it draws a picture of a, a tree. And he said, nope. And it eventually it starts to guess and it works out how far off it is. And a few trillion turns later at this game, it starts to work out what these things are. So again, it doesn't understand what a double-decker bus is or what toothpaste is, but it knows what it looks like. And after enough times of guessing, a few trillion times of guessing, it's really good at now creating images. Images still have some problems, but they're pretty good. And they will become pretty perfect, probably photographic very, very soon. Um, so he's great to watch. Just a couple of general concepts on this. If you watch these people... I watch them on YouTube often with and interviews. All these experts, some are engineers, some are leaders. They all appear shocked about how this, how well this stuff works. Nobody expected this to work so well. Nobody fully understands how it works. It just does, um, which is a bit scary in itself. Um, they they're also all a bit shocked about what this might do to civilization. So people that understand this are all a bit hesitant and some talk about they only release versions at a certain pace according to our human ability to 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 adapt to them um, i'm not sure if that's hype or not but it is what some of them talk about uh, another guy you should let you should watch sam sam altman is the ceo of open ai so chat gpt he talks about, he worries about um, who's going to own the rights to these models. He, he's one of them. Microsoft owns that now pretty much. Um, he talks about how capitalism might not survive this because this is going to be able to do so many tasks so quickly. He talks about what if we had the last, what if we had all the civilization, all the um, development up to this point all happens again in the next year. So every piece of human development in the last 2,000 years, and we do the same again in a year, and then the same again in a quarter after that. And that's how fast this thing will move, because now there's no humans to slow it down. It's the computer moving us ahead, which is a little bit scary, and these computers are getting really fast. So just things to think about. Um, my, uh, I, I got a pump under my house and I was down under the house digging around yesterday trying to get this thing going again, covered in mud. And I'm thinking this is the last thing that the AI is going to get to. So if you're a plumber, you're safe for a while. And then I'm thinking if you if you were a robot, when the robot's smart enough to be able to fix the pump under my house, it'll be smart enough to say, no, I'm not going to do it. Um, and I'll still have to go and fix the pump under my house. But... That's beside the point. I, th I think humans are going to struggle a little bit with some of this stuff, especially humans that have spent the last 10 to 20 years doing tasks that now this stuff's going to come along and just do completely automatically. Um, that might be a bit scary for people. I think people might think, I've, you know, what have I been doing for 20 years? And it might happen to a lot of us that we think, you know, with our, our, our whole reason for being in the workplace has now been taken over and what value am I am I adding but we'll have to adapt to it um I think this stuff's interesting I think it's worth looking into I don't think you need to go out there and look into every tool and work out how everything works I think if you want to have a bit of fun go and play with things like mid journey and go and 
play with images because that's just fun and it's inspirational. On Mid Journey, you want a Discord server, so it's a like a chat, like a feed, and you can watch other people put in prompts. So create an image. You can watch what the prompt they put in to create the image, and you watch the images come back from other people. So it's quite a good way to actually learn what's possible and see what other people are creating. So it's fun to play around. I, I think people shouldn't be scared to play with this stuff. Hopefully everyone's at least tried ChatGPT now. Um, but it's not going to stop. Some people I see I see out there still fighting it, still saying humans are better at this and humans are better at that. And humans are better at a lot of things and we always will be. But there's some tasks I think people need to accept that humans are not better at. Um, I, th I think we elevate ourselves to think we're the best at all tasks when it's best just to think that, you know, we we accept that computers are better, better than us at maths. We've accepted that for a long time. But we all think we're better than computers at writing language, writing English, but we're not anymore, unfortunately. Um, doesn't mean there's no space. It, we, we still need creativity. We still need humans to think about concepts and think to how to apply this stuff. And there's still plenty of space, but I don't think fighting this stuff is the right way to go. It's it's You're definitely fighting a losing battle. That's all I have for now. Um, GPT-4 came out a few days ago. I just started playing with it. I don't think anybody sees anything revolutionary. There was a demo, which actually was revolutionary, on, I think it was on YouTube, watched the demo from OpenAI. And he, um, the COO, or the, somebody at Open OpenAI, drew a picture of a website on a napkin, just a simple sketch, and he took a photo and he plugged it in and created a website. It created the HTML to create a website from that napkin in a few seconds. Um, that's pretty scary. That part's not available to us yet, um, the image to text, but that's happening. And that's going to be um, revolutionary. The other thing is you can now submit much longer prompts, so it can now go up to 32,000 tokens, which is about 25,000 words, which is, I don't know if that's a book. I'm sure it's not a book, but it's a small book. It's quite a lot. So that I didn't expect that to move up. That did last week. And general results, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll do another video in the future. I haven't tested it enough yet to see how much of a step up GPT-4 is. Um, but I'll do more of these. I'm going to probably do the next one next week. I've been testing a voice-to-voice uh, uh, -voice chatbot which we released we didn't release we put it on our staging server this morning i was very excited about that i did my best geordie accent and it understood every word of it and gave me excellent results based on magpie product content so i'm excited about that i'll do a i'll do a demo on that next week when we put it out on our on our production server that's it for now um thanks for listening till next time